Hello, I'm Jen Barnaby, and this is the next in my series of videos on Apache NiFi. In this video, I'll go over the data provenance page. The data provenance page can be a useful tool for data flow managers when they want to track down what happened to data in their flow. To get to the data provenance window, go to the management section of the toolbar and click on the data provenance button here in the middle. That opens a new page with information about various processing events. The processing events are listed in this type column. We also have the date and time each processing event occurred, the flow file UUID or unique identifier for each file involved, the file size for each file, and the component name and component type for the components that produce the events. This table is only showing a thousand events at a time. But we can look down here and see how many events we have to search within. I have over 30,000 events available. A typical scenario would involve a data flow manager who wants to look for a particular flow file in the data flow and find out what happened to it. They can click on the search button here. In the search events window, they have various criteria they can use to search for what they're looking for. By default, you have event type, flow file UUID, file name, component ID, and you can narrow the search further using the start, date and time, end date and time, and file size. This search criteria is customizable and you can talk to your administrator about how to set that up. You can use an asterisk as a wildcard, for example, if you want to search for a file name with a specific sequence in it. In my example, I'm going to search on a flow file UUID that I've already copied, and I'll just paste it right into that field and click search. Now I have just the events that affect that particular file. Over here to the left, I can click on any of these view details buttons to see details about the particular events. That window actually has a lot of features that we'll cover in a separate video. If I go over here to the right, I can click on any of these Show Lineage buttons to see a graphical representation of what happened with those events in the flow. Since I clicked on the drop event, that one is highlighted yellow here. But we can also see other events that preceded it. These smaller circles represent the events, and this larger circle represents the flow file involved. If I right click on any of these events, I have the option to go back to that view details window. The fork event has more options if I right click it, where I can see the parents of a flow file, expand the children of a flow file, or collapse those views. I'll demonstrate find parents. Here we see that we have the original flow file that I was interested in, and now we can see the parent flow file that it was spawned from. You can see that when I um, hover over those flow files with the mouse, I can see the path they took highlighted in yellow. If I go down here to this slider bar in the lower left hand corner, I can kind of scroll through and see how the flow unfolded over time. Another cool feature is I can go up to this download button up here to the right and export this graphic so that I can either send it to a friend or use it to document my flow or something like that. Now if I want to go back to the data provenance page, I want to click this X here. If I click this X, it'll take me completely out of the data provenance page. So I'll click this one. Now the last thing I want to show you in the data provenance page is this go to arrow all the way over here to the right. Just like in the summary page, if I click this go to arrow, it'll take me right to the processor that produced this event. That way I can troubleshoot it further if I need to. So that's just a short overview of the data provenance page. As I mentioned, there are other features that we'll go over in a separate video. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.